Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, welcome to the last Grand Line Review video for 2019. And as a result, I think it's only best that we celebrate the year that was One Piece with this video by counting down the top 10 moments of the year. Now, just so that we're all aware of exactly what this is, I will be selecting moments from the manga that have rocked our world this year. And the reason why I'm using the manga alone is because everything we've seen in the anime actually happened in 2018, and most of those moments will probably be on my top 10 moments of 2018 list, which I made last Year. But this is here to serve as a spoiler warning for you anime only watchers. If you're not keen to hear what the top 10 story developments of 2019 were, then I'm sorry, but this is where we part ways for the remainder of the year. I suggest you pick up the manga immediately though, because we are going to be starting 2020 with a huge bang, and trust me, you want to be on board for this hype train. For everyone continuing, the only eligible events are those that have taken place between chapters 929, which was entitled Shogun of Wano Country, Kurozumi Orochi, and chapter 966, which if if you're an anime only fan, well, you've been warned at this stage, so I can say that it was entitled Roger versus Whitebeard. And just so that we're not ignoring the elephant in the room, yes, I am well aware that scans for chapter 967 have been released at this point, but as the official release is not until January, none of those events will be eligible for this list. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top 10 best One Piece moments of 2019. Number 10, Kamazo is killer. All right, so we're starting this one off with an event that probably seems like absolutely nothing in retrospect compared to the madness that was stacked later in the year, but this was actually an incredibly influential event in the lifespan of the series. Because ever since Killer was introduced during the Sabadi arc, the theories have been overflowing with thoughts of what he could look like. His face was stealthily introduced to us in a brilliant but painful manner. Painful because Killer had consumed a smile fruit, and we were really able to empathize with the sheer torture he was feeling, especially through his Captain Eustace Kid. And of course, this also provided our very first fight between two of the supernovas. I would say worst generation members, but that's not technically true since Blackbeard and Luffy had a skirmish in Impel Down. And you know what, come to think of it, Laura and Hawkins have also had a skirmish, so just forget what I said. Semantically, I suppose this is the first fight between two worst generation members that has had a conclusion. There we go, perfect. And it's a moment that we've been building up to in the series ever since Sabadi, and it did not disappoint. It was a great revelation, and one that leaves me incredibly anxious to see where both Killer and Kid are going from here. Number nine. Enma. So 2019 and Wano in general seems to be really focusing in on Zoro as a secondary protagonist in much the same way that Whole Cake Island had a focus on Sanji. And as part of said focus, Zoro finally had to part ways with Shusui, but ended up trading it for the mighty Mato Blade Enma. And this sword really does provide Zoro with what I would call his first proper challenge of the New World Era, as it is a truly unruly beast to say the least, and very demanding of its wielders, being somehow capable of forcing them into a state of armament haki, which is a very new phenomena for inanimate objects in this world. But nonetheless, Zoro as all Always was more than up to the challenge and began training with this exceptionally powerful weapon. And while the true fruits of this endeavor will not be shown until presumably 2020, this is still a massive development, especially in terms of saying goodbye to Shusui, who we've had along for the ride ever since Thriller Box, that's about 12 years now. So yeah, that's a pretty big change. And such a thing means that we can only expect an even greater spectacle from Enma. Number eight. Big Mom's Amnesia. So this one feels like a really long time ago now, and it was also quite a controversial storytelling decision, really dividing the manga reading fan base. A lot of people said it was far too convenient a method for her to join our side even for a brief period, especially given the lack of any decent explanation. In fact, we still don't really have one, and yeah, that does kind of bother me. But at the same time, I do love everything that Olin provided during her time in the series. A character like Big Mom being reset back to her original innocent self is an idea that I still love, even if it was a bit shoddily implemented. And to be perfectly honest, I'm kind of sad that she did eventually regain her memories because I had grand visions of her becoming an ultimate force of chaos that would be able to balance out the fact that the allied forces are so woefully under-equipped to be going up against Kaido's armada. But if anything, Big Mom went on to have the opposite effect still. Charlotte Lin Lin played a massive role this year and is set to continue doing so in 2020. Although this time it will be with all of her memories intact. Regardless, I will always remember that 2019 gave us Olin. Number seven. Kozuki Odin. This one is a more recent development, but a character that we've been waiting to see for an awfully long time now. Odin has been tantalizingly hinted as quite a profound character within this world, and his official introduction and flashback did not disappoint in the slightest. This man really is larger than life, and I think that 2019 has given us a great impression of Odin's rise to prominence and lust for adventure. Meanwhile, we do know for a fact that 2020 is going to bring with it great tragedy, as the fate of all flashback characters will soon be upon us. However, that will not take away the incredible legacy that Odin will have on the series. In fact, it will only solidify it. 
Odin is rather strangely at the moment connected to almost every major pirate in the world, having traveled with both Whitebeard and Roger, and therefore also knowing Shanks and Blackbeard as a result. Plus he does meet his eventual end through Kaido, so the only person really missing is Big Mom. Still though, there really hasn't been a character so deeply rooted in the series since Luffy himself. And I mean, Odin is the kind of character who could have an entire series written purely about him, and he has been nothing less than a pleasure to follow this year. Number six, Big Mom versus Kaido. So look, when two of the four emperors clashing isn't even in the top five moments of any given year, you know that it's been a pretty great period of One Piece. While we're here though, this was nothing short of incredible. Prior to this strike, the only time two of the four emperors had been shown colliding was the legendary Whitebeard versus Shanks moment at the end of Return to Water 7. And I love how this mirrored that, with Oda even going so far as to split the sky open once again. This was one of those chapters that just left you in absolute awe of what had just transpired. However, this situation would go on to swiftly top itself with number five, the Emperor Alliance. So if there's anything more impressive than two of the four emperors engaging in combat, it's two of them actually forming an alliance and instantly becoming the biggest threat that this world has ever known. This event is not something I could ever have comprehended happening before it actually did. Even now, it seems like such an overwhelming consolidation of power. I mean, the Straw Hat Alliance had such a low chance of victory when they were just dealing with Kaido and his forces, but now to think that they're up against two of the four emperors, the climax of this arc is going to be off the charts. Although there really is still no ray of victory in sight. Although for the sake of this list, that's not so important. What matters is that the alliance between Kaido and Big Mom has set the world ablaze with fear, and we are now entering unprecedented territory in the series. Very, very exciting times ahead. But this year still managed to give us a hell of a lot more than that. Number four, the abolition of the Seven Warlords. So speaking of world shaking events, this also came as quite a shock. The Warlord system is one of the earliest factions of power we were introduced to with Mihawk on the Baratier, and they've been a constant in One Piece ever since, with Luffy having either made allies or having defeated the large majority of them. But times are changing all over the world it seems, and when we emerge from Wano, nothing is going to look the same again. I mean, with the potential defeat of two of the emperors and the dissolution of the Warlords, this series is really going to break into a vicious power vacuum that will consume pirates and marines alike, and possibly even even culminate in the final battle of One Piece. That is how significant getting rid of the Warlords is, not to mention where their allegiances will turn to now. Although we do know from Oda's Jump Festa message that Boa Hancock might be in a bit of trouble. I guess all we can do is wait and see. Number three the God Valley Incident. There is such a ridiculous amount to love about this. First up, this section of story introduced us properly, or at least somewhat properly, to the Rocks Pirates, revealing that they consisted of almost every individual who would go on to be a major world power and commanded by a figure who can only be described as terrifying for being able to harness such a group, Rocks D. Zebek. But not only that, this also gave us one of the greatest panels I've seen all year, with Garp standing victoriously after the defeat of Zebek, looking bloodied and pushed to his absolute extremes. I love it. Plus the idea that he had to form an alliance with Roger in order to secure victory on God Valley is endlessly fascinating and a great example of how Oda can just radically reshape our perspective of the series with a mere portion of a chapter. Such great storytelling, and I really hope that this event gets expanded on more in the future. Number two, Roger versus Whitebeard. So ending the year strongly, we have a clash that made me forget that Big Mom versus Kaido had even happened in 2019. This really is the stuff of legends and a completely eclipsed former meetings of powers through the simple idea that their conqueror's haki was so potent that their weapons weren't even able to touch one another. And I won't go into everything I loved about it again because you probably heard me waffle on at great length in my chapter review, but this is the kind of moment where I am so glad that I am not only a fan of One Piece, but that I read it week to week and get to experience these highs with other fans worldwide. It just wouldn't be the same going through it all without that aspect to it. But with all of that in mind, even a fight between the former Pirate King and the strongest man in the world was not enough to come out on top this year. So let's finally move on to number one. Bounty reveals. Yeah, you know the ones. So to be honest, I don't think that anyone would have expected anything else to top this list. The chapter that revealed the bounties of Shanks, Kaido, Big Mom, Whitebeard, and Roger, all in one fell swoop took the fan base by storm like I'd never seen before. 
Now for some context, owning and operating a One Piece channel, I often get spoiled in the comment section of my videos, which is mildly annoying, but what can you do? It's just the nature of the gig. But in this case, I was convinced that the spoilers were fake. It just sounded too outlandish to be real. So in some weird way, it was still an actual surprise when I got around to reading the chapter. And I really still can't believe that Oda went so balls to the wall with revealing all of these bounties. Like the four emperors I can understand, but Roger and Whitebeard as well, oh my God, it's just overkill. There is definitely an argument to be made that it was way too much of a good thing, but given the sheer quantity of goodness that this does entail, it is impossible to deny that this by far was the crowning moment of One Piece in 2019. And that pretty much does it for the top 10 One Piece moments of 2019. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do feel free to check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own favorite One Piece moments of 2019. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next year.